Assalamu alaikum, I'm Pavel and I welcome you all to another video tutorial on calculus. Today is the eighth lecture. In this video, we will learn about exponential and logarithm. So we will start with the exponential. Before we move on to solving some problems, at first we need to understand this expansion. So e to power x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial. So the next term will be x to power 4 divided by 4 factorial in this way all the way to infinity. Okay, so in this video, I will not explain in details about this expansion. Uh, if you want to learn more about this expansion, I will give you a link in the comment section and also in the description. Okay, so if we know this expansion that e to power x is equal to 1 plus x uh, all the way to infinity, now we will uh, solve some problems and we will um, derive some formulas using this expansion in calculus, especially in limit. Say, for example, we want to know what would be the value of limit x tends to 0 e to power x minus 1 divided by x. And this value will be equal to 1. Now, we will derive that how it becomes 1. Okay, so let us start. Limit x tends to 0. Uh, if we start with the expansion, so instead of e to power x, we can put the value of the expansion. So we will have here 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial, x cubed by 3 factorial, all the way to infinity, minus 1 divided by x. I hope you understand. So what we have done here is that we have just replaced the value of e to the power x. So we have put the value of e to the power x here. Okay. Now in the second line, what would happen? We have a 1 here and we have another one. And this is positive one and this is negative one. So these two ones cancel out. So the next line, we will have the remaining terms other than these two ones. So we have x plus x squared by two factorial, x cubed by three factorial, and all the way to infinity divided by x. Okay. So now what do we observe here? We can see that in the numerator, all the terms contain x. And as you can see, the power of x is increasing. That means in the next term, we will have x to the power 4 divided by 4 factor. So in the upcoming terms, we will always have an x. That means we can take x as common. So in the next line, we will do, I mean, we will take common, x as common. So if you take x as common, so what does it mean by taking x common? It means to divide all the terms with x. So if you divide the first term with x, x divided by x. So you have a 1 here. And then what would be the next term? If you divide this term with x, so you get x divided by 2 factorial. And then in the next term, you have x squared divided by 3 factorial all the way to infinity. And in the denominator, you have x. Okay, now what can you do here is that you can cancel out this x with this x, okay? Now what do you have? We have limit x tends to zero. We do not have anything in the denominator. So we have only this expression here. So you have one plus x by two factorial, x squared by three factorial, all the way to infinity. Now what happens? All the terms, except the first term contain x, okay? You see that here in the second term, you have x. In the third term, you have x. In the fourth term, you have x. So in all the remaining terms, all the way to infinity, you have an x. So if you put the value of x as zero, so this term will become zero. This term will also become zero. In this way, all the terms will become zero. So you have only one. So the answer will be one, that's why this is equal to 1. And from now onwards, we can use this expression, I mean, this part as a formula, okay? What is that formula? Limit x tends to 0, e to the power x minus 1 divided by x, that would be equal to 1. And how does it become 1? We have seen, okay? Uh, I hope you understand, I mean, the derivation part. If you have any questions, I mean, even if, if you don't understand, then please let me know in the comment section so that I can verify and check that where is you facing, uh, where are you facing the problems, okay. Okay, so let me 
show you another example, okay? Uh, I hope this is clear. This should be pretty much clear to all of you. But then, yet some of you might face some problems, okay? So, this has been one problem. Let us solve another problem. If we have something like this, limit x tends to zero, e to the power sine x, negative one divided by sine x. So what would be the result? It would also be one, okay? So how? Let me show you. So in the next line, what we can do, we can expand e to the power sine x, okay? So here you can see that e to the power x is equal to one plus x, x squared by two factorial, x cubed by three factorial all the way to infinity. That means here you have sine x instead of x. That means all the x, x's, this will be replaced with sine x. So what we get here? We get one plus sine x plus sine squared x by two factorial plus sine cube x divided by three factorial all the way to infinity, negative one divided by sine x. I hope you understand. So what have we done here is that we just replaced the value of e to the power sine x. I mean, we expanded e to the power sine x. So after we expand e to the power sine x, what we get here is one plus sine x plus sine square x divided by two factorial plus sine cube x divided by three factorial all the way to infinity minus one divided by sine x. Okay, so in the next line, what would we get? We'll get uh, this one and the negative one at the end will cancel out. So the remaining terms will be sine x plus sine squared x divided by two factorial, sine cube x divided by three factorial all the way to infinity. And in the denominator, you have another sine x. I hope from now onwards, you will be able to solve the next part. So what we do do here, we will take sine x as common from all the terms. So you get sine x as common. So it would be one sine x divided by sine x is one sine square x divided by sine x. So you have a sine x divided by two factorial. Then if you divide sine cube x with sine x, so you get sine square x divided by two factorial. And this way all the way to infinity because all the remaining terms contain sine x and the higher powers of sine x. And in the denominator, you have sine x. So sine x and sine x cancels out. You have the remaining terms. So we can write this as limit x tends to zero, one plus uh, sine x by two factorial, sine square x by three factorial, all the way to infinity. Okay, now what happens if you put the value of the variable, uh, which is x? So if you put the value of x as zero, then it would become sine zero. And we know that the value of sine zero is zero. So in the numerator, you have zero, and in the numerator, whatever you have, the result will be zero, unless it's zero, okay? So it becomes zero divided by two factorial, so this is zero. It also becomes zero divided by two factorial, that is also zero, so, and in the subsequent terms, uh, the terms, all the terms, remaining terms will contain higher powers of sine x. So all of them will become zero eventually, and whatever there is in the denominator, it would be zero. So from here, all these terms, all the remaining terms becomes zero. So we have only one here. So the result will be one. So we can write this as limit x tends to zero e to the power sine x minus one divided by sine x is equal to one. Okay, now one thing interesting. Do you see any similarity in between these two problems? So you see that here, you have e to the power x minus one divided by x is equal to one. And here you have e to the power sine x divided by sine x. I mean, so here, the sine x is the power of e. Here, this x is the power of e. And you have a negative one. So in this way, whatever you have, unless cos x, because cos x will create a problem, okay. So for all other terms, you will get the result as one. I mean, if the structure is similar. Let me show you uh, another problem. Okay, so I will clean up the board now so that I can show you another problem. Okay, let me show you another problem. Limit x tends to zero if you have e to the power two x 
minus 1 divided by 2x. I hope that most of you from uh, just by looking at the problem, you can easily, very easily say what the answer would be. It would be definitely a 1, okay? Because what would happen? We will at first uh, replace the value of e to the power 2x. So it would be, I mean, you have to replace all the x with 2x. So what do we ha have? Let me just write down the expansion. So what would be the expansion? e to the power 2x. So instead of x, you have to put 2x because e to the power x is equal to 1 plus x. So you'll get 1 plus 2x. Then the next term will be 2x whole square divided by 2 factorial. So it would be 2x whole square divided by 2 factorial. And then it would be 2x whole cube divided by 3 factorial all the way to infinity. So this would be the expansion, okay? So how would you solve this problem? At first, you need to replace the value of it to so 2x. So you replace that. And then what would happen? This one and the negative one at the end, they will cancel out. And then from the remaining terms, you can take twice x as common. So afterwards, you cancel out twice x from the numerator and denominator, and then you put the value, finally you'll get one. Okay, let me show you. So at first, we put the value of e to the two x, I mean, the expansion. So it becomes one plus two x, two x whole square by two factorial, all the way to infinity. And then you have a negative one at the end, divided by twice x. And then this one and the one at the end, they cancel out. So you have two x, two x whole square divided by two factorial, all the way to infinity, divided by two x. Limit x tends to zero. So you take twice x as common from all the terms. So you get one plus two x by two factorial. And then the next time will be two x whole square by three factorial. Okay. All the way to infinity. And then you have a two x in the denominator. Okay. So now you have this expression limit x tends to zero. Uh, one plus two x by two factorial. 2x whole square by 3 factorial all the way to infinity. Now what happens? The similar thing, you put the value of x in all the terms from here. So it becomes 0 divided by 2 factorial because 2 times uh, x is 0. So 2 times 0 is 0. 0 divided by 2 factorial becomes 0. And the next time 2x whole, uh, whole square divided by 3 factorial, it also becomes 0 because uh, 0 square is 0 divided by 3 factorial. So and all the remaining terms which contains the higher power of x, all of them becomes uh, 0. So at the end, you have only one. Other than one, one plus zero plus zero, all the way to infinity. So one plus zero, all the remaining terms. So that is equal to one. So I hope that from this particular tutorial, you have understood what would be the result when you have a problem statement similar to this. So it were x minus one divided by x is equal to one. It were twice x minus one divided by twice x this will also be equal to one. So if I say, uh, I mean, if I give you a few more examples, a few more statements, problem statements, say limit x tends to zero, it will work twice x minus one divided by twice x. I hope that you can very easily answer this question. So this will also be equal to one. Now, another thing, if you have something like this, limit x tends to zero, it will work negative two x minus one divided by negative two x. So this will also be equal to one. So I'd say that you should try out these two problems at your own and let me know whether you could find the value as one or you got something else. Let me know in the comment section. I hope that you understood uh, everything that I discussed in this particular video. Even if, uh, if you have any sort of confusions, you can let me know through the uh, comments. I will try to answer all of you. Uh, if not all of you, I will try to answer maximum of the uh, comments. I'll try to reply those. Usually I reply. Okay, fine. So if you find my video helpful, please subscribe to this channel and also inform your friends and near ones about this channel so that I get the inspiration to make more and more videos for you. I mean, uh, my, most of my videos will be related to mathematics and computer programming. So if you have any queries related to these topics, so please let me know. Uh, so, 
I will have to end this video now. I have another class, which is physical class. I will get back to you soon, inshallah, with new topics. I mean, the next topic will be related to logarithm. So till then, stay fine. Take care. Allah Hafiz.